Whatever their past, they had in common a spark of the same fire that inspired their leader. Columbus set sail, and it wasn't long before his expertness in navigation was the talk and admiration of the crew. Steering southward, he caught good east winds that carried him westward. Who was to say that the master mariner had not plotted his course well? As for stories of falling off the end of the sea, <laughs> these were men not easily frightened. But suddenly trouble began. The Pinta had lost its rudder. Fortunately, the Canary Islands were only three days away. More waiting, more delays. First the rudder, then re-rigging the Nina. The crews became less certain. They were leaving the last known land. What lay ahead, no one knew. Days passed, the vast unknown still lay before them. Columbus expected land any day. They had traveled in line at least 2,000 miles. And the men were growing more restless by the hour. Home began to look better to them than strange lands. Safety more glorious than riches. They begged Columbus to return. Some wept like babies. Twenty days have passed, yes, and still no trace of land. And the sun came up on the morning of October 12, 1492, to reveal a new land. All doubts and fears were gone now. The men were happy, excited, finally realizing that their captain was right. And when Columbus knelt to give thanks for his good fortune, they listened reverently. Imagine the joy of men who believed themselves doomed to die, discovering a new shore, a new hope, never knowing what dangers might be lurking there. In the name of King Ferdinand and Isabella, Columbus took the island. He named it San Salvador.